Hi there, it's Joe from Signage Live here. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you all about local playlists and local users. So let's picture that you have a team that you would like to be able to manage their own digital signage, but you don't want them to have the admin privileges or the visibility of the additional settings within Signage Live. You want the entire process of them uploading their content to be as simple as possible. So you want them to be able to upload their content, hit the save button, and then their screens will automatically update that content. And that's exactly how local users and local playlists are designed to function. So let's walk through how this process looks for a local user. The local user will log in. They will then see a playlist that is assigned to the player that they are editing. So in my case, let's pretend it's this one here. They have a playlist that is assigned to that player. And the only thing they can do is add content to that particular playlist and then hit the save button. This simplifies the entire content uploading process for them and simply means they can log in, upload their content, drag it into the playlist, hit save, and then when the player next checks in, it will automatically download that content that they've added to that playlist. This entire process operating in such a way means that the process of uploading that content or updating the content on their screens can take less than five minutes. As an admin, where do you come into this process? Well, once you have set up your local users, it's your job to then publish the playlist for those users. And the idea is that that playlist will remain published to that player. And then when your local users are updating their local playlist, it is automatically reflecting those changes on screen without you even having to do anything. But prior to you having that set up, you will have to make sure that the correct playlists are published to the players ready for your local users to go in and start changing things. A common workflow for this is that you would publish a master playlist and within that master playlist, you would have local playlists nested within that. And those local playlists are the ones that are associated with the players. So when your local users are logging in and making those changes, they're just affecting that local playlist. The actual master playlist is not being affected. It's just their local playlist part. The good thing about this is that you as an admin, if you want to add more content to that player without affecting the local playlist, you can go in and edit stuff on the master and that localized playlist is just gonna remain the same. It will of course play alongside the content that you add to the master, but the idea is that that is the playlist that is associated to the local users. And then everything you do outside of that is from a master playlist level. I'm gonna to jump to my laptop now and we'll run through how you actually go about setting this up. Okay, so here I am in my signage live network now. And today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pick a player on this network. So let's just go with this first one here. And that is going to be our local player for our imaginary local user that we're gonna to make today. So I already have a bunch of users on this network, but what I'm gonna do is change the role of one of them to be a local user. And this is how we do that. So I'm gonna scroll down to my user, which is this one here, test, test. I'm then gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna tick the local user flag here. And what that's gonna do is immediately that's gonna change the tabs up the top here. And I'll go through what each of those tags mean in a minute. If I scroll down here, what you also notice that you can do is now that this user is a local user, I can actually assign a particular folder for that user's content to be uploaded to when they upload their content to Signage Live. In this case, I'm happy for them to have their content uploaded amongst all the other content. So I'm gonna leave this as it is. And if I scroll down, I can hit save. And now this particular user has become a local user. Now heading over to the first tab here, the local user player permissions tab is arguably the most important one because this is the tab where we are going to allocate what player this particular user can see the associated local playlist for. So to clarify, if I add a player to this user, so in this case, let's add the one that I spoke of. So I'm gonna click add new player permissions. We'll select 100940. And now that is the particular player that this local user can see the associated local playlist for. They won't see anything until we make that local playlist, but this just essentially means that any local playlist that is generated for this player, this particular local user will be able to see that and add content into that associated playlist. I'll go through the process of setting up the actual local playlist itself in a minute, but before we do that, I'm just gonna show you the local user tags. So if I click on the tags here, what the tags allow you to do is that you can actually lock particular assets that this local user can see. So for example, if I add a tag to my user, let's say I called it local, for example, like so. This then ensures that when my local user logs in, they are only going to be able to see assets within the asset library that have the tag local on them. 
In this case, I'm not going to use a tag. I'm just going to remove the tag for now. So this will mean that when they log in, they'll be able to see all of the assets that are amongst the content library. So now our local user is set up. We now need to set up the local playlist. And to do that, what we're going to do is go to content, playlists, create and edit. Now from a top level, this is always going to start with your master playlist that we mentioned earlier. And just to clarify, the master playlist is typically the one that you're going to be publishing to the player. You can publish the actual local playlist itself directly to the player as well. And I'll show you how to do that as well. But essentially doing this from a master playlist level means that you get that control of adding your own content into that playlist as well. Again, you could add this to the actual local playlist itself, but this way it means that you're not actually touching their playlist. And when they're editing it, they're not suddenly going to see random assets appearing in their playlist. You could add content to that master playlist and they will be none the wiser because they can only see and edit their local playlist that is housed amongst that. So we're going to go over to control assets on the left here. And I'm going to scroll down and find localized playlist. Upon dragging that over to the right there, that's obviously going to create a new playlist. You can drag this into an existing playlist if you want as well. And you'll see immediately it gives it a unique ID. So this one's called local playlist and it's got a long number. If I double click on that now and then go to the local playlist tab here, I can then change this to whatever I want it to be. So I'm going to call it Joe local playlist test in this case. And from here, we get more control over how that local playlist is going to perform when it's amongst the content of that master playlist. So for example, the play order, we can set that to normal. So that will mean that all of the assets will play in the playlist before moving on to any other content in the master playlist. We can select random, which will of course randomize that order. And we can do reverse, which will of course reverse the order. Number of assets to take from the playlist, that means you can tailor how many assets you're actually displaying amongst that master playlist there. Again, we're gonna leave this as it is for now. Unique playlist per player. So this determines whether each player will get its own unique local playlist or they have a shared one. Again, in this case, I'm gonna set this to yes. I'm gonna leave it on the default. And now we need to select what players are going to be assigned to this local playlist control asset. So in my case, we're gonna select the one that we chose earlier, which is the 100940. And upon doing that, you can see my player has appeared down the bottom here. If I press OK down here and then hit save in my master playlist. So I'm going to call this Joe master playlist or master Joe playlist even. And now our local playlist is ready to go. That local user, when they now log in, they will see the associated local playlist for this particular control asset. And to show you that that's been created, if I click open playlist here, and filter by recently added, you'll see the two recently added playlists are the Joe master playlist, which is obviously the one that we've just been tampering with. And then you've got Joe local playlist test 100940. So that means that that is the associated local playlist for that control asset that is assigned to player 100940. If I open that, you'll see there is no content in there. And that is the exact same playlist that our local user is going to see when they log in. So what I'm now going to do is publish this to a player. And of course, we're going to publish this as a master playlist. So I'm going to select my time and date, select my playlist, and we're going to do the Joe master playlist in this case. Of course, it's empty at the moment, but when the local user starts adding content, that'll be ready to go. And then what player do you want to publish this to? We're going to publish it to 100940. So that player will shortly receive that content. But now what we're going to do is see this from the local user perspective. So if I now log out and I'm going to log in as that local user that we created, select my network and immediately when I log in, I'm met with the prompt that asks me what playlist I want to open. You'll notice I don't get an option to close this either. And this really hones in on what the design behind the local user is. They are designed to log in, find their playlist, add their content, save their playlist, log out. And then they have the peace of mind that their playlist is already published to the player. Therefore, when the content updates, it will automatically update on the screen. So in this case, I'm going to open that same playlist. And of course, we're going to find that it is empty. And now at this stage, I can go and add any content that I want to add as well, like so. And you'll also see I don't get the option to make a new playlist because again, that is not within the permission set of a local user. I can simply save my playlist or open any other playlists that I might have access to. So I'm going to hit save. And of course, when my player next content checks, 
it will download that new content that I have added to that playlist. And that will happen every time I add new content and hit that save button. And that is a top level overview of how you configure local playlists and local users in Signage Live. It's worth noting that if you are a local user that has access to multiple playlists, the same concept will apply here. So when you log in, like you see that I have here, instead of just seeing the one playlist, I would see any playlist that I have access to. You can then select your playlist, add your content, save, and then providing that playlist has already been published to whatever player it is assigned to, that will automatically update on your screens. I hope this helps. And if you have any more questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. We'd be more than happy to help. We'll see you on the next one.